Today on Callahan's Garage, it's totally rainy and gloomy outside, so what better reason than to spend the day in the shop? But today, we got something totally different. Haven't done before. It's not a Volkswagen. It's not a Cadillac. There's a boat in the shop. Let's go. So welcome back to Callahan's Garage. My name's Callahan and today we are looking at my 1984 Mastercraft ski boat. So this is my 84 Mastercraft Skier 19, more affectionately referred to as a Stars and Stripes edition because this is in fact the land of the free and the home of the freaking brave and we put stars and bars on everything. So fun fact about me, a lot of people don't really know. Um, I spent the majority of my childhood and young adulthood competitively water skiing at the national level, like national tournaments every year, regional podiums, like state championships, all that good stuff. And for those of you that don't know, that looks like this. But it also sometimes looks like this. And for that reason, my wife will not let me jump or ski, you know, that hardcore anymore. But we do go to the lake and get some free skiing and have a good time, and that is exactly what we use this boat for. So for those of you that don't know, Mastercraft is kind of the gold standard in competition ski boats, and that's exactly what this is. You know, this is a purpose-built ski boat specifically designed for pulling water skiers in a competitive setting. You know, that is its only purpose. It's 19 feet relatively shallow hole you know it sits very low in the water it's got a small block ford v8 right smack in the middle of it direct drive coming out the back i mean it is a purpose-built tugboat it doesn't go super fast it doesn't you know do anything special but it will tow absolutely anything down the lake all day long so growing up all over different lakes and around all kinds of different boats over the years, you know, this has been an absolute dream boat of mine since I was a little kid. And it took me years and years to find a really good one in the color scheme that I was looking for. And we finally found one a couple of years ago. Um, and it is an old boat, but runs really great, does everything I need it to do. But today we're going to add some 21st century amenities to this thing. So like I said, I've owned this boat for a few years now. Mechanically, the boat's in great shape, runs awesome. Um, however, the trailer, you know, is, is straight out of 1984. It needs some updating. So I've already put a folding jack on here. I built a spare tire mount for it. I've rewired the whole trailer, put new lights and everything on it. But anybody that has spent any time around one of these era Mastercrafts knows that this lockdown bar and this winch are absolutely the bane of your existence. You know, if the, if the boat ramp isn't absolutely perfect, it can really be difficult to get the boat hooked and locked back up. So we're gonna yank all of this off today and we're gonna put a new setup on here. All right, so we got a couple things we're gonna do. We're basically gonna build a whole new winch stand on the front of the trailer. So we've got a new winch, nice new clean strap that I'm not worried about. It's gonna break on me at some point. And we've got a nice new ramp and clamp. So. This is basically just an auto locking latch system that goes up on the front of the boat and it allows you to drive the boat up onto the trailer. And when the eyelet goes into this, it automatically locks in, allowing you to just pull up off of the boat ramp and then you can hook your, your winch up and strap it down once you get out of the way. 
So this is just gonna add a lot of convenience and ease to the loading and unloading process, make everything quicker and easier for us when we're putting the boat in and out of the water. So first things first, we'll do some disassembly. I'm gonna get the spare tire off and out of the way. We'll take this old winch off and then I'm gonna start cutting this old lockdown bar. We'll get all this out of the way and then we can start fabricating our new winch stand up here. All right, so we've got all of our old trailer gear removed, everything cleaned up. We got a nice clean surface to start fabricating our new setup. Um, so I've looked at a couple of different ways that people have modified these trailers, and I think I've come up with what's gonna be the best solution here. Um, so I've got my ramping clamp up here in place. This is the sport model. It's supposed to work with our factory eyelet. We'll see if it actually works or not. It looks like it may be a little tight getting our winch clamp onto there. So we'll, all we're gonna do is we're, I've got my three inch square tubing here. It'll come from the trailer up to our ramping clamp. That'll, this will bolt through that. And then we will take this piece of three and a half inch square tubing and it'll mount off of that three inch tubing and give us our winch plate. Um, then we'll also make a kicker bar that comes down to back here at some point to you know, triangulate all this and really make it nice and strong. Um, so I'm gonna get this strapped up in place and then we can start measuring and cutting our upright piece here. Okay, so I've got my ramping clamp strapped in place up here. This is exactly where this thing is gonna live. So now I just need to determine, you know, the dimensions of my upright piece. So I've just got a straight edge here. I'm gonna place that straight edge right on the center line of my bolt through my ramping clamp. And then that's gonna tell me kind of where the center of this post is gonna be. And actually we're gonna kick that me kick that down a little bit so again my straight edge is right on the center line of my bolt up here and then i'm just going to mark where the center line of that tubing is going to be so this mark i'm making right here is going to be the center of my upright piece so now that i have that marked what i'm going to do is take my little angle finder tool and i'm just going to use this to duplicate this angle of my straight edge here. And that's gonna give me the angle that I need to cut the bottom of this tubing for my upright piece. So that looks good. Make sure that this is tight so it doesn't change. And then, now that we have our center line here for reference, I want to measure the height of the what that upright piece is going to be. Straps a little bit in the way, and this is three inch tubing. So let's say an inch and a half on each side. Half. Inch and a half. That gives us three inches total. So now I'm going to measure from the bottom of my ramping clamp down to this mark here. And that's going to give me 23 and 1 8. So from the inside of my angle cut up to the very top of my upright piece is gonna be that 23 and 1 8. 
Okay, so we've got our piece of tubing up here on the table. We're gonna get our cuts all laid out and then we'll start chopping this thing up into the shape we need. Um, like I said, this is three inch square tubing. It is also quarter inch wall. So this tubing is plenty strong enough for you know everything that we're gonna be throwing at it. And then additionally, like we're gonna put that kicker tube on it. So this will be way stronger than anything that has ever been on this trailer before. So we're gonna come down that 23 and an eighth. 23 and an eighth. Make sure that mark goes all the way to the edge, nice and square. Then we can take our angle tool, make sure that we are lined up just right. Looks pretty good. And there we go. Now we have this cut laid out right here exactly where we need it. So I'm gonna mark this cut all the way around and then we'll cut it up. The only thing I have here to cut it with is my grinder. I've been putting off buying a bandsaw. So it'll take me a second to get this cut made and then we'll make sure that this is gonna fit up in there. Okay, so we've got our upright piece cut now. Everything's kind of set in place where it needs to be. And what I'm gonna do now is just mark the height of where my bolt hole needs to be. So we need to drill a hole through this piece of tubing to mount our ramp and clamp to. So I'm just gonna come in here and eyeball the center of that hole. And then from there, we'll come over here so we verified a couple things. So we know that our bolt hole needs to be five eighths of an inch down from the top of our post here. And it's gonna be, you know, an inch and a half on each side because that's that puts us in the center of the tubing. So we're gonna punch both of these sides. We'll drill our hole all the way through and then we'll start trimming this thing up so it fits up onto our, our clamping device. Okay, so we've got our upright piece cut. We've got our holes drilled. We've, and we've pretty much just set it up here in place. So basically what I need to do is just decide how how high up or low I want my winch to mount on this post. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that three and a half inch tubing, and we're gonna make a winch plate that comes out. So I'm basically just gonna hold this up in position where I think I want it. I'm gonna make myself a little mark here. And that's gonna give me a reference point for where my plate is gonna go. Because the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the front and the back side of this tube open so that my strap can pass through here and hook onto my eyelet. So basically we'll have tubing up to this point, we'll have our winch plate here, and then from here up, it'll just be plate on the side that's bolted through our, our ramp and clamp up at the top. All right, so we've got our upright piece all finalized out here. You can see, like I was talking about, we cut our front out, we cut our back out, so now our winch strap is gonna be able to go right through here, hook onto our eyelet and function correctly. The next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this piece of three and a half inch tubing, and what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna kinda slot the top of it and, and cut the back of it so that it fits into this tubing and around this tubing, and it'll basically sit like this, and then our winch will sit on top of this. So I'm gonna get this all cut out, and then I'm gonna put this together and we'll see how it looks.
right, so finally done cutting all of our pieces out. I really need to get a plasma cutter. Cutting this quarter inch tubing is just no fun with a, with a cutoff wheel. Um, but I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna get it in position up here, get everything all checked out. We'll get it tacked in place. We'll double check that everything still fits on the trailer. And then we'll go ahead and we'll start burning some of this stuff in. Okay, we've got everything all cleaned up. Pro tip, if you are welding on hot formed material like this that has a mill scale coating, you have to grind off that mill scale coating. Your MIG welds will not fuse through the, through the mill scale. They'll wet out beautifully and everything, but they'll be super brittle. They'll pop right loose. You just cannot get a MIG weld to fuse through that mill scale layer. So that's why I've gone around and ground, ground off all of the mill scale anywhere I've got to do a weld. So there we go, we've got our post in place. Winch plate looks good. Our winch is gonna fit right here on the end of this. We're gonna take this little roller off so it looks a little more in the way than it actually will be. But that is gonna fit very nicely. Be nice and compact, nice and easy to access everything. It's gonna be nice. All right, so we got our post here on the table. I'm gonna make all of these welds from my winch plate sitting here on the table. That way I can do all of them in the flat position. It'll be really easy to get a nice, pretty looking weld. So our post is fully welded up. It's super hot. I'm gonna let that thing cool off for a few minutes. While I'm waiting on that, I am gonna cut off my spare tire mount. So let's take a look at it real quick. So the spare tire mount is one of the first things I did on the trailer here. And every now and then at the boat ramp angle is you know just right. The very corner of the bow up here will just barely scrub across that spare tire as the boat's you know, coming on and off the trailer. So I'm gonna cut this thing off and we're just gonna scoot it forward a little bit while we're up here welding everything. And hopefully that'll keep the bow of our boat from contacting the spare tire anymore. Okay, so we got our post in for the last time. We're ready to start tacking this thing in. So I'm just gonna make sure that it's positioned the way we want it. It's nice and straight. We're gonna tack this in and then we'll start fabricating our kicker bar.
All right, so making this kicker bar, basically all we're gonna do is put add another piece of tube that comes off of our upright piece and then ties back down into the trailer here somewhere. And I think I want that bar to land pretty much right here where these two frame rails wide together. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make just a little triangular shaped plate that's gonna sit flat on top of here. We'll weld that all the way around and then it'll give us a nice flat location for our kicker bar to tie into. And then also my spare tire mount will end up being about right here too. And when I, what I, another thing I noticed with my old spare tire mount is it when it when it shook on the road, it would kind of flex this frame rail a little bit. So that top plate will help tie this in, and it'll keep helping that, you know, help keep that frame rail from flexing around right here. Okay, so got my little plate in here. So just like we did for our post here, I'm going to use my angle finder, find the angle of this uh, this kicker that this kicker bar needs to be cut at. We'll get it cut, and we'll stick it in here. All right, so we got the last piece of our puzzle knocked out here. So I'm going to mark where I need to clean my mill scale off, and then we'll get this thing burned in. And last but not least, I've tacked my spare tire mount back on here, so I'm gonna throw the wheel up here, see how, see how it looks, make sure I think we've got enough clearance this time, but I thought we had enough clearance last time, so we'll see. All right, well, we got all our fab work wrapped up. Um, so, this thing's super hot, I'm gonna let it cool down. In the morning, I'll get out here, we'll clean everything up, we'll get some paint on it, we'll get all our stuff bolted in for the last time, and then we'll be wrapped up. Alrighty, well, we got all the work on the trailer wrapped up up here. We got our posts made, we got our ramping clamp installed, our new winch installed. This all looks like it's gonna work out just right. We got our spare tire moved forward a little bit, so hopefully we'll quit rubbing our bow a little bit when we're loading and unloading. I got some spray paint thrown on here for the time being. We are still gonna do some more upgrades to the trailer down the road, so I'm gonna put a new tongue on here eventually. I'm gonna put an electric braking axle on here eventually. Um, and at that, when we get all that done, we'll sandblast and we'll powder coat the whole trailer. But I've still got some fender repair to do and stuff like that. So that'll, we'll save that for another day. So now I'm going to get the boat pulled out. We're going to fire this thing up for the first time this year. I'm going to check the impeller. I'm going to change the oil and the filter in it. Check my fuel filters. Give everything a good once over and make sure this thing's ready for the weekend. folks well we got the cayenne all cleaned up ready to go we got everything done on the boat and the trailer so we got all of our pre-summer prep work done we got a new battery in it we got oil change fluids all serviced and everything we're good to go got our trailer upgraded a little bit we are going to do some more trailer upgrades later on in the summer but as for now we're ready to hit the lake this weekend so thanks for watching i'll see you guys next time